Blog Talk Radio. Hi there, I'm Mary Eileen Williams at Feisty Side of 50 Radio, and this show is a celebration of baby boomers who are embracing life as we grow older. Yet despite the many upsides of age, a long life means that we have witnessed a number of horrendous events, and one of the most horrendous of all is still going on and affecting countless women today. That is human trafficking. Our guest, Ruchira Gupta, is a writer, feminist campaigner, professor at New York University, and a founder of the anti-sex trafficking organization, Apni Op Women Worldwide. She's won the Clinton Global Citizen Award, the Sarah Bengali Award, and an Emmy for Outstanding Investigative Journalism. She's also edited As If Women Matter, an anthology of Gloria Steinem's essays, and written manuals on human trafficking for the United Nations. But perhaps her crowning achievement is that Ruchata has helped more than 20,000 girls and women in India escape prostitution. What a what an uh, an amazing uh, experience that must have been. But Ruchira is joining us today to share all about her debut novel, I Kick and I Fly. And I know you as I are going to be deeply moved and fascinated by what she has to say. That was a long introduction, but you deserve it. <laughs> Welcome, Ruchira. Thank you so much. I just so love listening to this introduction. You know, it makes my life sound so fantastic. Well, it is. It truly is. And I'm sorry, I will let you talk now, but I just wanted to put so much out there because I am such an admirer of you. I'm also honored because you have changed the lives of thousands of people, and you're continuing to do that, and this book will help and touch a lot more people. But And I want to get to it in a minute, but I would like to find a little more about you personally and how you became involved in such a wonderful cause you know i kick and i fly my book is based on true life stories and of course every story has a backstory right so uh, i kick and i fly is about a young girl who escapes prostitution by becoming a kung fu champ now why would i write such an unlikely story because it's true i started an ngo many years ago to end sex trafficking by breaking the cycle of what I call intergenerational prostitution. Prostitution that is passed down from mothers to daughters and fathers to sons. So I uh, did it through education by organizing women to take collective action and taking on the traffickers. So, uh, but how did I even end up starting an NGO in a red light area in India to do this? Again, there's a story about that. I was a journalist, and I was walking through the hills of Nepal when I came across rows of villages with missing girls. And I asked the men sitting there drinking tea where the girls were, and they said they all are in Bombay. As a good journalist, I followed the trail, and to my horror, I found little girls locked up in tiny rooms and being raped by eight or ten men every night. And I was angry, sad, everything that you can think of. Because as a journalist, I'd covered war and famine and hunger, but I had never seen this kind of exploitation done deliberately to little girls at this scale. And so I told the story in a documentary called The Selling of Innocence. It's on my website, ruchiragupta.com. And what happened was that I spent a lot of time talking to the women in the brothels. I went on to win an Emmy for Outstanding Investigative Journalism for the documentary. But when I was looking at the bright lights, all I could see were the eyes of the women. And I decided that I'm not going to use the Emmy to build a career in journalism. I'm going to use the Emmy to make a difference. So I took the documentary to the UN and uh, advocated uh, for a passage of a protocol which is now called the UN Protocol to End Trafficking in Persons. It did not exist then. I took the documentary to the U.S. Congress, and uh, with the help of two senators uh, from two parties, Republican and Democrat, Wellstone and Brownback, I showed the documentary and testified and asked for a law, which is now today the Trafficking Victim Protection Act. 
But then I felt, okay, I've got laws, but I also want to help the girls, the women who were part of my documentary. So I went back and started an NGO with the 22 women in prostitution who had told their stories in my documentary. They had four dreams. Uh, You know, they wanted a school for their children because they said, whatever has happened to us has happened. We want a different future for our daughters. They wanted a room of their own, Virginia Woolf, in a brothel in India. And they wanted um, a job in an office and punishment of those who had bought them and sold them. And that was my business plan. That's how my NGO, Apne Aap, started. And Apne Aap then, you know, over the years, you've already said, it's had thousands of women and girls exit systems of prostitution. But Ah. not only has he done that, we've uprooted the system where it was. So I kick and I fly. My book is exactly about that. Because I uh, actually uh, created a community which could fight for itself by organizing them to take collective action, by providing support in the form of a hostel where the children could study safely, by providing a legal desk in my community center where women could file cases against traffickers, by providing sewing classes and livelihood training so women could have systems to get out and helping them get government IDs because all of all the women were so marginalized, they were undocumented and, uh, you know, accessing low-cost food and housing. So this sort of holistic, integrated, intergenerational program is what Apne Aap is and became. Apne Aap means self-action in Hindi. And, uh, uh, you know, over the years, we just kept organizing and organizing and organizing, girl by girl, law by law. And uh, I began writing, I kick and I fly, when a girl, just like the girl in my book, actually won a gold medal in karate in my NGO in that village, in that red light district in India. I thought, you know, I've got to share this story with the world. It's a true story and it's so hopeful and triumphant. You know, because as an activist, activist, Eileen, you know, we think... We can bring about change. But the world tells us, no, 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 you know, these problems are too big. Why are you getting involved? I wanted to tell the world that, no, actually, you can stand up to injustice and win. And I wanted young people to know that especially. Oh, my gosh, Uchira. I mean, I was excited to speak with you, but after hearing just some of your story, I am truly speechless, which isn't too good for an interviewer. But, oh, I've got goosebumps and tears in my eyes. What a wonderful story. And, of course, this book, it is about those true horrors that have gone on for years and, like you say, intergenerational horrors. But it ends on such a a promise of of freedom. That part of it, I think, is wonderful. So tell us a little bit about it. We've only got, unfortunately, a minute or so left, but your your choice to have it end on something positive. Yeah, so I I wrote this book uh, because I wanted to share with young people that standing up to injustice is possible and you win. Because the girl in my book, I Kick and I Fly, she takes on the crime of human trafficking and saves herself and her family and her community after she becomes a kung fu champ and learns the power of her body and learns to fight for it. And as I told you, it's based on truth. Uh, So I thought that, you know, there are kids in America where human trafficking is such a big problem. Body shaming, bullying, food insecurity, homelessness exists right here. Uh, The Center for Disease Control has just come out with a report where they say teens are reporting mental health issues based on the very issues that I talked about. And my book can provide inspiration, courage, and clues. It can actually save lives. Scholastic, my publisher, has been bold enough to print this book for young people because I deliberately wanted it to reach every school and every library so that it gets into the hands of young people who need it most. You know, our big culture war is that we don't talk the truth to young people. And that then we cannot equip them to take on the challenges of life uh, that come their way. Now, my book does so in an age-appropriate way and in an interesting way as a social justice adventure. So Scholastic has also prepared a reader's guide to go with it so that parents can talk and teachers can talk to kids about it. And it's all on my website, ruchiragupta.com or even on ikickandifly.com, I really, really encourage young and old alike to buy the book and share the book 
because they will find some use which is beyond just the fun of reading the book. Oh, Ruchir, I I have been long awaiting this uh, this interview, and boy, have you blown it out of the water. You have changed my, I mean, as much as, of course, I had an opinion on human trafficking, I really want to get involved and helpful now. So, again, your website is ruchiragupta.com. The book has a website of its own, com. And do you have any final words? We've got a couple seconds left before we have to leave. You can read the book, share the book. It's available on Amazon, I Kick and I Fly, and it's available on any bookstore near you because not only will you find it fun, interesting, fast-paced, but you will find some things which will help you in your life every single day. Enjoy the book. Well, I certainly did, and I would pass that along to all of you listeners out there. Enjoy the book. It's a wonderful read, but it's also a story uh, of, of real hope and uh, and promise uh, after a life that has been not so easy. And, Ruchira, I think of all the lives you've touched. Thank you so much for sharing your time, your passion, and, of course, this incredible story with us. Thank you so much, Eileen, for having me on your show. Well, and I urge all of you listeners out there, please, let's let's really become involved. Let's pick up a copy of Ruchira's book, give it to your grandchildren or any young people you know, give it to your friends, spread it around as much as possible, because this is a, a true story and a story of real hope, redemption, promise, and uh, a lot of what Ruchira has seen firsthand. What an amazing read. What an amazing interview. Thanks again, Ruchira. And until next time, this is Mary Eileen Williams at Feisty Side of 50 Radio. Saying I'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.